Hello student, welcome to our lesson today where we are going to look at applications of radioactivity. We start with the first one, we have carbon dating. Now carbon dating will help us to know the age of the fossil or the age of the remains of the, or the past remains. Now how does this happen? Now when living organisms are still alive, they take small quantities of radioactive substance carbon-14. And this is in addition to ordinary carbon-12. So note that the carbon-14 is radioactive. Now the ratio between the two, that is carbon-12 and carbon-14, remains constant. But when this organism dies, there is no more intake of these two carbons. And therefore, the ratio changes due to the decay. Remember, carbon-12 is not radioactive, but carbon-14 is radioactive. So it implies that when organisms die, this carbon-14 will decay, and the ratio of carbon-12 to carbon-14 will change. So if we are able to get the carbon count rate of carbon-12, then we can be able to get the age of that fossil. So the new ratio of carbon-12 to carbon-14 is then used to determine the age of the fossil. For example, calculate the age of a piece of wood found to contain 1 over 8 as much carbon-14 as a living material. Assume that carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,600 years. We proceed as follows. We know that to get this 1 over 8, the initial was 1. So we divide using the linear method. We divide by 2. 1 divided by 2, you get a half. A half divided by 2, you get 1 over 4. 1 over 4 divided by 2, you get 1 over 8. So this will help us to get the number of half-lives. And in here, because now we have 1 over 8 that is present, then we can be able to know that we have 1, 2, 3, 3 half-lives. But we are given the, the value of the half-life. So we have the total number of half-lives as 3. And the half-life is 5,600. So the total time taken is 16,800 years. So it implies that the age of that wood is 16,800 years. That way we are able to get or to determine the age of that piece of wood using the carbon dating. Then number two, you, uh, we have medicine. Gamma rays, we know that they are electromagnetic waves and it has high frequency and high penetrating power. Just like x-rays that we learned earlier, it is used to control the cancerous cells. In other words, if you expose gamma rays to that cancerous cell, it will kill those cells. That way, it is used in medicine to control or to cure the cancerous body growth. Then, radioactive iodine-131 is used to monitor the function of thyroid gland. Then we have radioactive sodium is used to monitor the blood circulation. Now what we are saying is that this radioactive sodium is taken by your body or it is ejected in your body. And then using radioactive detectors, we are able to detect or to monitor how the blood is circulating in the body. Then gamma rays from co cobalt 60 is used to sterilize surgical equipment that it is able to kill germs. And therefore the surgical equipment are clean. Then also, gamma rays are used to kill pests and make them sterile. And when you kill pests, then you control the spread of diseases. So these are the ways of how radioactivity is applied in medicine. Then from there we move to number three, where we are detecting the pipe bursts. Now we have underground pipes, and these pipes may be carrying water or oil. Sometimes you may find that these pipes may burst. We may have a leakage. So what happens to control this or to detect? We mix the water and the oil with radioactive substance. And then we use the radioactive detectors to, so that we can be able to know where there is leakage. Because what we are saying is that because there is radioactive substance in the oil, then the radiations will be emitted. So when you have the radioactive detector, you can be able to know there is a radiation that is being detected and you can be able even to know the type of particle that is being emitted there. 
so that way you are able to know that there is a leakage at a particular point then number five it is used in determining the thickness of metal foil and this one is used in industries the industry that manufacture metal foils papers and plastic the radioactive radiations can be used to determine and maintain the required thickness. How does this happen? Now, the better source is placed on one side of the foil, and the other side we place the GM tube. GM tube is a radi radioactive detector, and it counts. It will give us the count of radiations. And these radiations will be a measure of thickness of the metal foil. We have it in the diagram here. We have the beta source that is coming from this head. Then we have GM tube. Now the source will be emitted here. Then they will pass through the metal foil. So the, the count that is given on the GM tube will give us the thickness of that particular metal foil. Note that we have the thick metal, thick metal here that is passing. Then we have the loras that are squeezing all that are ensuring that they are reducing the thickness. Then that metal foil is passed here and the number of counts in the GM tube will help us to maintain the thickness of that metal foil. So the thickness gauge can be adapted for automatic control of the man manufacturing process. Then we can use the radioactivity to trace elements. We mix the weak radioisotopes in, they are introduced in the living organisms, for instance, we have seen that sodium is used to, sh to show the blood circulation. So it means that sodium is I I introduced into the blood system. And then using the radiation detector, we can be able to see how the blood is circulating. Also, in agriculture, this method is applied to study the uptake of fertilizer by the plants and other chemicals. So you mix the fertilizer or you introduce the isotope into the plant at the fertilizer and then from there using the detector you can be able to show or to see the traces of the fertilizer and other chemicals because they are mixed with radioactive substance then from there we have the hazards of radi radiation but we, before we go to the hazards we still have another use or another application the detection of flows and these are cracks or air spaces in the welding joint. How can we be able to detect the cracks? Now we have that using the gamma radiation from cobalt 60, we can be able to realize or to get the cracks because they have the high penetrating power. The cobalt is placed on one side of the joint and a photographic film on the other side. So if you see the traces of gamma radiation on the other side, or if you find that the photographic film is darkened, then automatically you will know that there is a crack or there is an airspace in that welded joint. So that way we are able to detect the flows of metal joints. Then in the, the film when developed will show any weakness in the joint. Then we move to the hazards. When a human body is exposed to radiations, remember these radiations have high energy they carry energy and they have high penetrating power so when you expose your body to these radiations they can kill even the useful cells for example the gamma radiations we have seen that they they penetrate through the flesh they can kill those cells that are important that are vital in your body so that way you may find that it may even cause cancer so gamma rays present, present the main radiation hazard. This is because they have high penetrating power or they penetrate deeply into the body, causing the damage to the body cells and tissues. So you should be able to ensure that you avoid the radiations at all cost. Now this may lead to skin burns, the bristers, the delayed effects such as cancer, leukemia, and hereditary defects. So these are some of the hazards, some of the problems that are created by the exposure to the radiations. Now, extremely heavy doses of radiation may even cause death. How do we prevent this? We have precautions. 
Now, when you are working on a, an industry that is harboring radioactive elements, you should never hold them with the bare hands. You're supposed to use forceps or well-protected tongs when you're handling them. Because when you handle the radioactive elements with, with your bare hands, they are going to penetrate into your flesh and they may kill your useful cells. Now, for the safety, the users of the radioactive material should be kept. Those radioactive materials should be kept in thick lead boxes. These lead boxes will absorb them and they will not reach where the people are. Now, in hospital and research laboratories, radiation absorber should be used. And we are talking of maybe using the lead, thick lead, that can even absorb the gamma radiations. Then, in hospitals also, concrete walls should be used for rooms that store radioactive elements. This will prevent them from penetrating to the wall and getting into contact to human body. So that way we are able to prevent the humans from these extreme dangers of radiations. Then from there we have the assignment. It is just the testing what we have just learned. So make sure that you read, you comprehend, and finally share your knowledge with your peers so that you can retain this knowledge for a longer time. So thank you and let us meet in our next lesson.